For countless millennia, Barara Creek has made its peaceful passage across the green landscape, the central artery of a vibrant ecosystem. By the end of the 20th century, however, the pace of human settlement was taking its toll. Native plant species began to retreat, the water started to stink, and fish were caught with livers blackened by pollution. Then, in the early 1990s, came the final proof that man's relationship with the creek was unsustainable. A toxic algal bloom made it clear that urgent action was needed. This is a tale of victory over adversity. There are few who remember it more vividly than Chief Environmental Scientist Ross McPherson, who began working for Hornsby Council at the height of the Barara Creek crisis. It was so bad on some days that you'd be motoring down here and the water would be brick red, the consistency of tomato sauce. Um, the surface tension was reduced because of there was so much algae in the water and uh, the boat wake would look red instead of white and that was how thick this bloom, these blooms were. A large part of the problem were the two sewerage treatment plants that discharge water into the catchment. These were out of date and unable to cope with the demands placed upon them. For some time Hornsby Council had been asking the state government to overhaul the facilities with little luck. Finally, fed up with the inaction, Hornsby Shire's councillors took the unprecedented step of refusing to process any more development applications until the treatment plants were fixed. Uh, which was enormous. No one, I don't think any other council in New South Wales had ever done that before. Uh, so that was a huge step and this was, the community was supporting the councillors. The council was in doing that, in taking that huge step in, in to hold the state to ransom until they helped us fix up the problem down here. It was a very risky gamble one that could have resulted in council's dismissal. But instead the state government came to the table and in April 1994 a statement of joint intent was signed that included a promise to upgrade the water treatment plants. It was a significant victory, but only half the battle. The other major source of pollution was the Shire's stormwater system, which allowed far too much sediment to enter the catchment. To address the problem, a 2.5% levy was introduced for capital works that would help keep the rivers clean. It's never easy to introduce new taxes, but in this case the people of Hornsby Shire embraced it. The community's re reaction at the time was extremely positive. The community, um, they're a well informed, the, the people of Hornsby are a well informed, articulate community and they knew there was a problem and they worked out pretty quickly what the problem was and when the council said okay for us to meet our obligations under this water quality improvement program we're going to have to instigate some sort of environment levy um, there was huge community support. The levy is spent on various capital works projects carried out by Hornsby Shire Council such as this bioretention basin at West Lee that works on a number of levels. A trash rack at the stormwater outlet traps large pieces of litter then the water cascades over this stone barrier and is finally filtered through sand and plants. As this animation demonstrates, it works like a giant organic sponge that soaks up all the nasty sediments the water has collected in the streets and releases clean water to continue its journey to the river. This footage, captured at the Westley site following just five minutes of heavy rain, gives an idea of how much pollution is being taken out of the system. Environmental scientist Dave Baharrell oversees the program for Hornsby yeah, Shire Council and his pride is clear as he surveys the latest project. So what we have here is the exit to the bioretention system. Prior to the system being put in place, uh, water which ran down this catchment would be polluted with sediments, uh, excessive organic matter, nitrogen and phosphorus. Through the treatment process which is undertaken in the system, uh, primarily we get coming out of this pipe is clean water. And the program continues, with ground recently broken at yet another bioretention basin in Cherrybrook. So far more than 400 stormwater treatment devices have been scattered throughout the Shire. Hornsby Shire's example is regarded as best practice in the industry, according to Dr Ian Wright, an environmental scientist to whom water is so important he bought a property with a creek in the backyard. In my professional experience there's 50 councils across Sydney, Sydney Basin um, all councils have responsibility for protecting waterways, the catchment, the environment, the residents. Um, Hornsby would be the model council in, 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 in terms of how you do that. Um, they have the most extensive program I know of in 
protecting waterways, in doing practical actions to rehabilitate and look after them and engage the community in that process. So I would regard them as, 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 as one of the best um, in, the, in, in, in Sydney and one of the best in the state that I've heard of. Which is good news for the members of Council's team, as well as all the residents of Hornsby Shire who have helped bring Barara Creek back from the brink. It gives you great pride and, and I sit back and I think in, in, in 20 years time I'll be driving around here in my retirement looking at these wetlands and gross pollutant traps and, and coming down here and fishing on the estuary and just saying you'll be able to say to yourself yeah I had a part in that, I had a part in, in fixing this environment and improving the quality of life for people down here so that gives you a great sense of pride.